uh, salutations dear viewers. Um, in this video I'm going to explain why the case for further gun control is unanswerable. Um, and this is around the world. Many countries already have sensible gun controls. Some of them have gone too far. But this video is primarily addressed to people uh, in the United States where gun control, uh, serious gun control is long overdue because I am my brother's keeper. And you often uh, offer counsel to people in other countries about how they ought to run their affairs and sometimes that's sagacious and welcome. There are decent gun um, arguments against gun control and there are some good people who are on that side, but many are not. Uh, and I've had not had many rational arguments against my position, so listen to this with someone who's oratund, who's well versed in the arts of suasion. Um, you are an ass clown butt munch. Here's it, well, that certainly put me in my place. Uh, what a logical argument. What could I possibly say? He must really convince me that I'm wrong. And another one, using long words does not make you clever. You are a pompous prick. Well, first of all, uh, having a wide vocabulary is a metric of intelligence. Uh, um, and if you didn't know that's how IQ is measured, one of the ways how it's measured, what does that say about you? Um, and uh, pomposity or not, is my argument sound or unsound? Uh, and it, whether I'm a prick or not has got nothing to do with it. So this person is bereft of any worthwhile arguments, so therefore he is forced to stoop to this sort of invective. And I don't swear at uh, people who use these vulgarities towards me. When someone is obliged to resort to that sort of tactic, it shows that he or she has run out of uh, worthwhile arguments. Do you really think someone's going to change their mind due to this verbal abuse? It's pathetic. Um, so I could be wrong, but you can't, obviously. And as John Stuart Mill said, when I realise I'm wrong, I change my mind. Um, and I'm often called a pussy, as though it takes some courage to purchase a gun. How does that make you brave? You're obviously very afraid if you feel it need to be tooled up like that. So um, people think it saves them from being effeminate. Um, does it make you masculine to want lots of innocent people to die? 33,000 gun deaths a, a year in your country, wouldn't you want to reduce that? Some anti-gun control people say yes they do, but they will uh, try and treat it as a mental health is issue. That's a Marco Rubio attitude, and that there's something in that. So those um, who suffer from this terrible sense of worthlessness, they think a gun is a penis extension. Some of these men, some women buy it, I'm not quite sure why. Well, for protection, I don't think it's really to do with wanting to be more male or female for them. Um, and so it doesn't require any valour to own a gun. It's not an achievement to have one, all right? It's not bad to have one. I used to have a shotgun. So some people are afflicted by low self-esteem, and so they, they seek validation in swaggering around and trying to scare people. It's contemptible. This over-protestation about uh, masculinity suggests a deep-seated fear of not being masculine enough and think you can somehow be emasculated if you weren't allowed to have military-grade weapons as a civilian. So guns are somehow compensatory for some people for a lack of status, education, accomplishment, wealth. And they're often the same people who say we mustn't have uh, affordable health care. That wouldn't do them by quality of life, but having military-style weapons would. So there are people of different attitudes. You could be a liberal person who's against gun control or a libertarian or a left-winger. But quite often they're arch-conservatives. I'm a conservative in my country. In the UK I was a member of the Conservative Party. Republic of Ireland there isn't really a Conservative Party, but that's my attitude. Um, so the people who, who are against gun control, they're often religious fundamentalists, free market fanatics, except when it comes to corporate welfare, supporting this rate, latest tax break, tax break for very profitable companies. They're often Islamophobes, militarists, blinkered nationalists, ethno-nationalists. Now, all sorts of people can favour gun control. You might subscribe to all sorts of those positions I disagree with, but still concur with me on this single issue. There's a common thread of irrationality. Uh, malice and scarcely suppressed violence running through this. Now, what about your country, I might hear you say? My nationality comes up a lot in these screeds from other people. My country's not perfect. Um, and indeed, in the Republic of Ireland, in the UK, gun control went too far. So I acknowledge there's a certain logic to your case, the anti-gun control people. Handguns being banned. For example, the British Olympic team, they weren't able to practice in the UK, and there had to be a special exemption for them and well, all teams for the London Olympics. Uh, but anyway, it's illogical to say because I'm foreign, my argument is wrong, all right? Uh, if a foreigner said two and two makes four, would he be wrong? It doesn't matter what the nationality is. Uh, so some people have guns for hunting, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can see it's gratifying. 
It's good for the pot if you cook what you kill. Uh, it's good for the uh, ecosystem, so long as you don't go too far. It's exercise. I did it myself. I can well understand why people wish to do that. But one mustn't be too categorical about this argument. Pro-gun people, as they call themselves, those who are anti-gun control, are people who favour gun control like myself. Um, the choice is not binary. It's not a case of no gun control or no uh, guns whatsoever. All right? Virtually everybody favours favors gun control, even those who say they don't. It's a question of how much. How about that federal law prohibiting people from having a, a gun within a thousand uh, feet of a school in the United States? Uh, and there are some exceptions to that. That's gun control. And the National Rifle Association, <clears throat> they propose that. Or keeping them out of the hands of the mentally ill or felons. That is an example of gun control. Having gun-free zones in planes, in courthouses and so on, in the White House. That is gun control. So virtually everybody favours gun control. It's a question of how much gun control, which particular uh, restrictions ought to be introduced. So we shouldn't be trying to be too confrontational, not see this as two opposing sides, don't have to be at loggerheads. We can be in a, in a semi-circle and there are infinite gradations of gun control. That's what we should debate. So perhaps there's too much us and them going on in this discourse and maybe I'm guilty uh, of uh, being like that as well. Um, so uh, people who are opposing gun control, they often change the subject. But what about medical negligence? Well, people do try and tackle med medical negligence. Indeed, you can go too far and actually therefore make people more likely to die because it's too expensive to see a doctor, or doctors are too risk-averse, or they over-treat conditions. And they'll talk about all the other causes of death. All right, you could be an across-the-board authoritarian and try to restrict or remove all dangerous items. I don't go that far. I recognise no law will meet with total compliance. And um, it's impossible to uh, eliminate risk, and I don't wish to. And if we could ban all firearms and have zero deaths, would I go for it? No, I wouldn't, because again, that would be going too far. I seek reasonable restrictions. What I often hear from the anti-gun control people is the absolutist fallacy. Shapiro tried this one. Uh, you mustn't ban automatic weapons, because you're not going to then ban handguns. So you mustn't go a little bit towards gun control because you're not going all the way. No, uh, that doesn't hold water at all. It's, no, it's completely incoherent to say that. Um, anyway, uh, so we should have reasonable uh, gun control restrictions. Now, what's reasonable? That is also a bone of contention. But uh, the case for, uh, for the gun control is, is uh, unanswerable. No legislation will ever get the gun deaths figure down to zero. Um, and any legislation which could do would be going much too far. But uh, it's, it's uh, impossible to rationally argue that uh, no further gun control should be introduced.